Hello, livestock friends, and welcome to this edition of Before the Bid. This is a podcast dedicated to the livestock sales industry where we go behind the scenes of the operation and speak straight to the sellers. We discuss topics about the important aspects of their operation, location, the people behind the prep work, and talk about some of the animals that will be offered to you, the prospective buyers. Hopefully, you've got your sale catalog close by. You might have to go look through that pile on your desk. But if not, then you're probably like me and driving down the road or busy with chores around the farm. And that's okay, too. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you enjoy this segment of Before the Bid. I'm your host, Andy Howell. Welcome, Livestock Friends, to this edition of Before the Bid. And on this one, we go to Zap, North Dakota. And I have three people on the phone that I am excited to talk to. We've had some really good conversation leading up to this. And just what a great family this is. And and I want to bring that out to you guys, that the family they are and the things that they do to make this operation work. And I also want to tell you, they're going to have a sale on SC Sales. And that one is going to be on October 25th. And again, we're we're going to Zap, North Dakota, and we're going to talk with members of the Johnson Cattle Ranch, and we're going to talk with Josie, we're going to talk with Paul, and we're going to talk with 16-year-old Sydney, and they have a great story, and again, a great family that works together and does some things to raise these cattle and, and to bring you these cattle that they have for sale. So I am excited to have you guys on the phone, and I want to welcome all three of you to the podcast. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. All right. Sydney, I want to bring out that you have been an AI technician for four years now, and you're 16 years old. Yes. What possessed you to go to AI school when you were 12 years old? Well, mainly I know my older sister was an inspiration to going because she also went when she was young. Uh Uh-huh. But mainly being to pick my own breedings and being like, oh, I was the one who AI'd that cow. (laughs) I was the one who made that calf happen. Great. Well, that's awesome. And I'm sure you're seeing a lot of success with that as you learn more and more over the years. Yeah, I've had a pretty good pickup rate so far. Do you have a favorite one that you bred that you started from the beginning? You bred that one, you raised it, and and either you sold it or you showed that one. Anything like that that you can pull right off the top of your head? Yeah, I know Lot 8 Pancakes in the sale is my AI calf. Mm -hmm. The 72W No Guts No Glory heifer in Mm -hmm. the sale. The Lot 3 is a calf I AI'd, and I AI'd for my heifer I'm showing this next year, so that's pretty cool. Oh, wow, that is. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. Josie, I want to welcome you to the podcast uh, as well. And, and Josie and Paul, they have a, a great story. And Josie, let's start with you a little. And, and why don't you tell us a little of your background and, and kind of leading up to where you guys are today? Well, by trade, I am a registered nurse uh-huh. and worked at the local nursing home, the local hospital. And as we started having kids and have a husband who does shift work at the power plant and mm-hmm raising cattle, you can't do it all. Mm -hmm. So I retired as a nurse and I became a full-time rancher with the kids. Mm -hmm. And we homeschool. Mm -hmm. We've been homeschooling our children since my oldest was in the second grade, which leaves our schedule open to basically do whatever we need to do on the ranch. Mm -hmm. And it's just a great way of life and teaching these kids hands-on and having them be responsible for our life. And, you know, without the kids, this ranch doesn't work Mm -hmm. because they are my helpers. They're my right hands. Cindy does night shift during calving, and Bennett and Nevea, my 12-year-old and 8-year-old, they're my help during the day. If we got to bring a cow in, check the calving position, or if there's a foot back, they're mm-hmm. right there helping me. I mm-hmm. mean, they learn right along with us, and mm-hmm. I could not have it any other way. Mm-hmm. These kids are just, they're amazing. They're hard workers, and they're also my help in getting the calves ready for the sale. Mm-hmm. I have not touched a clipper in 10 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's Cindy's job. Uh-huh. Oh, that's neat. 
Yeah, and it's Bennett, Nevea, and I, my 12 and 8 year old, we've been haltering and bathing. And these calves that we are going to offer are as gentle as most of them will come. Mm-hmm. You don't have to say, shh, be careful or be quiet. Oh, right. you can yell and scream in the barn. The calves are used to it. Uh huh. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. Josie, you came up through a little bit different kind of a cattle operation, right? Yes, I grew up in a dairy farm milking. Mm -hmm. And we milked over 100 cows twice a day, family farm. Mm -hmm. I have six sisters and one brother, a big German family. Oh, yeah. My mom is a first-generation German, came over from Russia. Oh, wow. And, yeah, she learned to speak English when she was actually going to school. Uh And that's when she was first introduced to the English language. So, you know, we have a lot of fun with the German accents and Uh talking about German towns and, yeah, let's go to Strasbourg. And (laughs) my my kids laugh at me when that German accent comes slipping out. But Uh it's part of our heritage and... After, you know, milking, um, we kind of got away from milking as the milk prices and Mm -hmm. milking, you know, changed and the industry changed and we moved into beef cattle. And Mm -hmm. then my father developed Alzheimer's at the age of 52. Mm -hmm. And so we basically had to sell out and retire. And now we rent out the land to help my mom with the income and Mm -hmm. retirement. So now we live on a ranch that my husband grew up two miles south of. And Mm -hmm. we continue to try to produce females that work in a show ring and out in the pasture because if you show them in the ring, they got to go in the herd to produce right. babies. Right. Absolutely agree with that. Yeah, I'm excited about those kind of breedings. So, Paul, you grew up right in the heart of the cattle business. Yeah, we were a mixed grain and cattle operation when I grew up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nothing to do with show. I didn't know anything about show until uh-huh. the last 15 years here. Uh huh. So I was never even in 4-H as a kid. So mm-hmm. this is all new to me in my adulthood. Mm-hmm. What was your background? Was it a commercial operation? Uh, what was it? Just call calf pairs okay. and sell the calves in the fall. Okay. It was mostly a Hereford at that time. Okay. They were the, the big breed around here. Okay. Now, wasn't it your grandpa that was the buyer? Is that right? Well, yeah, he was a buyer, but that was before my time. He uh, He was retired like in the early 60s. Okay. So about the time I was born. So it was my dad... And his operation was the one I grew up in. Okay, okay. We didn't travel anywhere and and buy anything. At that time, it was just the cow-calf pairs. Okay, all right. A large operation? I think at one time we we branded a little over 200 calves one summer. Okay. So that's that's about the biggest that we ever were. Right, okay. Now, we've kind of heard a little of everybody else's role in, in this operation. Paul, what would be your role? Mine is, I suppose... You'd say more in the summer. I'm one that does a, the majority of the haying, mm-hmm. keeping the equipment running, preventive maintenance, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Keep keep everything going. But Josie is, if I'm working, she she's out in the in the field too. Uh-huh. So she does a, a lot of the, the mowing, and she really picked up on baling this year. So mm-hmm. it's a team effort all the way around. But I, if there's ma- maintenance work, that's pretty much mine. Right. Now you work off the ranch, correct? Yes, I, I'm a control room operator in one of the local coal-fired power plants here. Okay. And so you're doing quite a bit of time in there, 12 hours a day, things like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, average 40 hours a week there, yeah. Okay. All right. So that leaves Josie and, and Sydney and, and the others to kind of take care of the ranch. Yeah, they really hold the fort down while I'm at work, and then I give it heck when I'm when I got some days off. Right. And then I've been there long enough now, I have a pretty generous amount of vacation. So (laughs) in a five-week rotation, I usually end up with about two weeks off Uh every five weeks. So so I can can get a lot done in the summer to help Mm -hmm. out, too. Mm -hmm. This job at the coal plant, Mm -hmm. that was Paul's first job. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Your first job ever. What, (laughs) were you 17 when you started out there as Uh, a summer help? Yeah. Yeah, I was was actually working there at 
as a seasonal help when I was 17. I turned 18 while I was working there. Mm-hmm. And then I went to college for power plant school, and then I got hired permanent there before I had even completed my one year of college for power plant. So, uh-huh. yeah, I've been there. This next month will be 39 years I will have in. Oh, there. wow. Yeah. Well, that's neat. Josie, you had a few thoughts on some of the power plant things and, and some of the things that are going on right now that you kind of wanted to, to talk about. Well, it just seems like we're in the industry trying to raise our family in two industries that are part of a cancel culture. You know, the cattle future is fighting for its future, and the coal plant, there is a war against coal. There is a war against cattle. Mm -hmm. And we need to really figure out where our future is going to be because this is the heart of our livelihood, you know. Mm -hmm. Without reliable coal, and they closed down, we've seen several power plants closed down in our area. They just don't close and close the door. Mm -hmm. they got to demolish them and take them down. And for as many power plants that are closing, there's not any more being built. So we have a really concern in the area about providing reliable energy Mm-hmm. and the future mm-hmm. of livestock. Mm-hmm. And so as we're, you know, raising these kids and fighting for the future, where our cattle industry is going and where our coal industry is going, you know, we have a lot of worries on our plate of what our future holds and what the future of our youth holds that love the livestock and want to have a future like Sydney at the age mm-hmm. of 16. And mm-hmm. where is life going to lead her? Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely understand that. And you guys have had some other challenges with water and rainfall out there in North Dakota this summer. This has been the driest ever in the history of North Dakota. Mm -hmm. I would say since about March. You know, North Dakota, we're always supposed to have snow, snow, snow. Mm -hmm. I don't think we had maybe two, three inches of snow all winter. Oh, wow. We had what they call an open winter. We had no runoff, maybe four and a half inches of rain since March. Mm-hmm. The temperatures, 100 degrees. Mm-hmm. It's been the warmest summer on history mm-hmm. and the driest. Mm-hmm. And this is our first time we're not going to have cattle in our backyard. We had to send our girls to feedlots. Mm -hmm. And that was so hard watching them getting on the trailer. And we already had to send them out into September. Mm -hmm. So that gets to our days of pitchers. We were going to do pitchers on Saturday, and now there's a 100% chance of rain. (laughs) If I would have known (laughs) scheduling pitchers to get some rain, I would have done it all summer long, you know? (laughs) Right. But yeah, it's, I mean, you had wheat in the fields that were three inches tall sprouting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Corn that was eight inches tall. Oh, it's been, it's been very difficult and stressful on the farmers and ranchers. Mm -hmm. And so many of our neighbors had to sell out. And so many young ones trying to get started are just, it's a heartache. And the Mm -hmm. stress in the livestock industry right now is, you know, serious and Mm -hmm. visited with our neighbor and he's like, yeah, I already sold a hundred cow calf pair and my water Mm -hmm. dried up and Mm -hmm. we had to drill a new water well. And Mm -hmm. people have been hauling water all summer because without the winter snow runoff, your ponds didn't get flushed. Mm -hmm. So we started out with toxic water in May. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Yeah, one fellow I work with, they've lost a handful of cows in just a matter of a couple of days from bad water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they're fencing out their dams, uh huh, so they can't so they can't get to it. Right. You know? So then they've got to find another source. Mhm. Right. And most of it's been, you know, trucking it in. They're hauling water, and then mm-hmm. the hay. Nothing really grew mm-hmm. over the summer. You know, but it's going to be this winter we need snow. Mm -hmm. We need tons of snow. We need snow like you haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And snow like when I was a little kid, you had to snow blow and all the corrals Mm -hmm. were covered. And that's the type of snow we're talking that we need. Right. And then have a really nice runoff and flush Mm -hmm. all the ponds and the streams. Right. 
And then we need rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah. I know a Southern Indiana guy that would love to send you all the snow that's <laughs> that might come to Southern Indiana. <laughs> yeah. I would love to send it all to you. But you guys have have hopefully cured that for Picture Day. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. And yep. gonna make sure that <laughs> make sure that the rain comes and rains pictures out. So some of them say one of the worst days of the sale is picture day, and uh, so you guys it may be a, maybe both. It may be one of the worst and best days. Hopefully, one of the worst and best days of the sale. Ah, uh, yes. Josie has posted some memories she gets on Facebook. You know, mm-hmm. what two three years ago. And I and I look at it, and the grass is green, and I catch myself just staring at it. Right. Like, I forgot what that green looked like. Right. Because there hasn't been it this year. Mm-hmm. It, everything now is is brown to gray. It's it's mm-hmm. unreal. It's like the grass hasn't just gone dormant. It almost looks like it's died. It's so bad. Mm-hmm. And that you will see in our pictures because we're doing it at the home pasture and mm-hmm. the backyard, and you know it. I have never seen it this bad, and. Mm-hmm. People that are in their 80s say, this has been our driest. We have never seen North Dakota. And then the fires and Mm -hmm. the smoke and the air quality and... Mm-hmm. It's it's been a rough one. We'll be glad to rip this year off the calendar. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Understand that. So absolutely understand that. You guys, when everything is going right and things are going well, you guys have marketed some cattle before without a sale. This is going to be your first sale, correct? Yes, this is our first online sale. We usually do private treaty. Mm-hmm. And we follow through with that customer pretty close. I mean, we sold a gem out to Arizona. We Mm -hmm. showed her first. She Mm -hmm. was a June-born Shorthorn Plus. Mm -hmm. And actually, the full sieve is going to come out as our lot one on our sale. And that little heifer, at the time, Cindy, was they uh, sick when she was showed her? Yeah, it was in 2019, so yeah, I think she was six. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so she was an August-born, and we took her out, my six-year-old, just... No, no, she was a June-born, not an August-born. A June-born. I'm sorry. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And my, you know, little Nevaeh takes her out and shows her, and she really, you know, she won the North Dakota State Fair Shorthorn Division with her, and we had a gal from Arizona contact us and said, hey, do you have a Shorthorn? Well, that one wasn't for sale, but we knew it was her eight-year-old grandson that needed it, and Mm -hmm. we're like, you guys, this heifer has so much more to give. She's Mm -hmm. just a June-born. We just got her bred. She's in her prime. So we sold her out there, Mm -hmm. and that heifer was undefeated. She won and won and won and brought them banners, and but, you know, she was so good and I've even posted pictures of her 1500 pounds milking and you know raising the 800 pound heifer on her side and oh that heifer is just she's done very well for them and Mm -hmm. became a spoiled little girl and she was the only beef on the ranch Mm -hmm. and it came time to you know because we bred her and came time the family was like well, how do we know when she's going to have a calf? And so we helped them walk through the calving, all the equipment they need, and it was really a fun time Mm -hmm. to see it through their eyes for the first time. Uh You know, it was just like, that's what it's about. Right. So, yeah, we've offered many private treaty. We have some going to West Virginia, Arizona, Lisbon, a few in Munich, that this is our first online sale that, you know, we truly worked really hard for a couple of years to bring the very best out that we could. Mm-hmm. And I think we got a heck of a set going in this year. Well, that's great. What a great way to start and might as well come out with the best, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we will sell our best because mm-hmm. our kids will pick out, you know, heifers and for our younger ones, it's like, well, they got to be tame for them. Mm-hmm. If they can handle them, even all of them, because mm-hmm. for how we work, you know, the kids are the fit team. The kids are the clip team. They're the wash team. They wash each other's calves on the rack. And, mm-hmm. you know, so they all got to be able to be led by my 8-year-old. Mm-hmm. And so when we're picking out cattle, 
for them to show. We also have to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So we may sell lot one and lot, oh, tag number 421. She's probably one of the best short harmons this ranch has ever produced, Mm -hmm. and we're going to sell her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, might as well offer the best, right? Yeah, you have to, you know. Got three steers, nine heifers, and an embryo lot in the sale. So we'll talk about those here in just a bit. And you guys have a few cows that you're flushing on that you kind of wanted to highlight a bit and and talk about. Yeah, so one of our donors is our Augusta Pride cow, Mm -hmm. who's produced several of our lots, actually, in our upcoming sale. And she's also like a grandmother to several of them as well. Mm Mm-hmm. She's one of the ones we're flushing on. We're flushing on one of my cows who, she's my first communion gift, actually. Uh-huh. She's out of Milkman, but she's mostly a commercial cow. Um, but she she happens to just throw the best calves off of, like, proven AI sires. Uh-huh. Yeah, here you're talking to a girl that makes her first communion, and we ask her, Sydney, <laughs> what would you like for your first communion? A show heifer? <laughs> Yeah, and I went uh, out and I picked her out. <laughs> oh. I enjoy those kind of young people so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah. And now, don't you guys have a shrag female that you're doing some flushing on? That's the Augusta Pride cow. Okay, okay. Yeah, we purchased her out of them. Okay. Yeah, we purchased her out of Shrog Shorthorn. Okay. And then our oldest daughter showed her for a year, and then okay. we just kept breeding and breeding and flushing her and getting the best quality Shorthorn out there. And mm-hmm. and that was her daughter actually went to Arizona. And okay. the Augusta Pride heifers that we have in our sale are out of that Shrog Shorthorn mm-hmm. daughter. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, lot one and the one that went went to Arizona were actually raised by the cow, too. Uh Uh-huh. Awesome. So naturals. That's great. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. You guys have another thing before we get to these sale cattle. We we want to get to those, but you guys, when everything is going right, you guys have a lot of eggs put into cows at your place. Yes. We run a very large herd here for what we can handle. Mm -hmm. And we rent out our cows to Heartland Cattle Company out Mm -hmm. of Deluxe. Mm -hmm. And they're actually having a sale coming up here in October. And a lot of theirs that are featured in the sale were raised in our ranch. Mm -hmm. And we put embryos in for them and we calve them out. And then we get through the weaning process and then they take them and they finish them. And they're matings, they're breeding. And because we just cannot handle the marketing the sale it's my kids and I Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. and we want to produce the best and we feel like the best is by having our small select group Mm -hmm. that we work on and then we get 12 lots have been a lot for us Uh you know for my group to where we want them tame and gentle and Mm -hmm. my eight-year-old leading them Mm -hmm. and so that takes time. Right. And we want to offer just the best. Mm-hmm. The the top, I think we started out with 25, uh-huh. and we're down to 12. Oh, wow. Yep. Right. Makes it real busy at the start, but then you get the best yeah. when you get down to this 12. Yep. And then you, well, let's put them on feed for a while. Let's see how that one grows and develops. And nope, mm-hmm. that one's not going to make the cut. We just want to offer the best that we have. Right. I think that's great. Let's talk about these 12 here in just a second. Where is Zap, North Dakota, other than just being in North Dakota? You haven't heard of the Zip to Zap? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> you really have? I, I, no, no, I haven't, but I want everybody else to know. <laughs> I want everybody else to know. <laughs> oh, gosh, Paul. It was during your day. Well, it, started, it, it was a little, even early there. It, it started out at UND, Grand Forks. The college picked Zap to make it like the spring break town of the north. Uh huh. And they picked Zap. They called it Zip Zap in that spring. There were several thousand college kids came to Zap uh-huh. in May. Yeah. and uh, Zap doesn't have a hotel. <laughs> Zap, Zap has a bar and a restaurant <laughs> it was, uh, and a post office. And it was gravel, gravel streets. We weren't paved. There was about 300, I think it was about two to 300 people was the town of Zap. 
converged on by about 5,000 college students. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, they, uh, it was cold. I think the the bar raised its prices, so its furniture went out to be a bonfire. <laughs> and uh, they cleaned out the, the restaurant's deep freezes because they were hungry. And uh-huh. then the next morning, the National Guard showed them out of town. Oh, my <laughs> at, gosh. At Bayonet Point, yeah. Uh-huh. They, they, National Guard forced them out of town the next morning. They came in so, with bayonets. So that, and... was, that was zip to zap. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I was uh, like five or six, and I remember my grandparents came out to our farm that night. They got out of town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they weren't staying there. <laughs> so I saw it the next morning. There was a lot of broken windows and uh, empty oh, beer bottles wow. and cans all over town. It was it was quite a deal. Uh-huh. <laughs> But, Zap, we can kind of see the end of the earth from where we live. Okay. We don't have cell service on the ranch, so, you know, we kind of live out in the middle of the boonies. We're not on GPS. Okay. So, you know, we have a landline. Call our landline, and we'll give you directions right to the ranch if you want to view the calves. But we're kind of Dickinson, Bismarck, and Minot are the three big cities that people usually know, and we're okay. located 100 miles from each one of them. Okay. Okay. Kind of out on the western third of North Dakota. Yeah. yeah okay. Almost by the Badlands. And we're okay. like 15 miles south of Lake Sakakawea. Pretty, okay. pretty big lake to the north of us. Right. Well, good. Kind of give everybody a, a bit of a reference point there to come out and see you guys and meet you guys and look at these cattle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, Sydney, I think they're mostly going to put it up to us to talk about these cattle. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Well, good. Well, let's let's talk about the lot one. We got a shorthorn plus female. Yeah, so she's the full sister to the heifer that's out campaigning right now in Arizona. Mm-hmm. She's a Monopoly times the Augusta Pride cow, and she's an April born. She's super mellow and tame, and mm-hmm. she's one of the first ones that I clipped on and clipped up. Mm-hmm. She's got a lot of added power, and she looks a lot like what her sister does down in Arizona when she was little. Mm-hmm. So she's got it in the family to bring home the purple, right? Yeah. Right. The lot two, you guys got a, one of the steers in here. Yeah, so that one is actually, back in 2019, my brother purchased an equity daughter mm-hmm. out of Heartland Cattle Company to mm-hmm. show. Because he went in the pen with her, and she came up, and she licked him. Mm-hmm. And he said, Mom, I want that heifer. <laughs> so the heifer chose him, and right. he got the heifer. Uh-huh. And then we had an Irish whiskey times Monopoly son. Mm-hmm. And that calf is the outcome. I mean, he's just fantastic in his type and kind. He's super, super fancy and bold in his muscle shape. Mm-hmm. And when he gets out and walks, everyone has to look at him. Mm-hmm. He is just fantastic. And he's so extreme docile and gentle, but he is so deep and bold and muscle and thickness, and he's just a beast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and on top of all that, he's still really, really fancy. Uh-huh. Like, I, I love his leg set. I love the extension to his neck. He's super clean-fronted. Good. And he's got a super, super angular face. Well, that's awesome. Good. I want to tell people if they're not following along on the podcast video that's going to be on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, if they want to go to SC after the sale is posted here, they can do that. Follow along with us. I'm sure you guys will have some things up on your Facebook page as well. I already have a picture or two up there, and that's at Johnson Cattle Ranch on Facebook. So that's kind of where I'm getting some of my information at the time being. So... Let's talk about this lot three female that you guys had. You've got a picture up there currently uh, while we're recording this, and, man, this this one's a good one. Yeah, this one's actually one of my AI cabs I was talking about earlier. Uh huh. Yeah, so her mom is um, a GCC wizard daughter, my older sister AI to one of our commercial cows, and she was the outcome. Mm-hmm. Then I bred her to no guts, no glory, and this heifer came out of it. She can go either way with the... Um, breeding or market just works with it really Mm -hmm. she's just got tons of muscles and thickness and boldness to her patterns and everything Mm -hmm. but she still has like a ton of femininity Mm -hmm. and a ton of flash Mm -hmm. she does yeah because her mom is like one of our main pasture cows that we like to breed 
she's going to be able to go out there and like produce in your pasture. Mm-hmm. She's going to make a good mom cow. She's going to raise you a good calf. Mm-hmm. Always like those ones that you can pull them out of the ring and put them out in the pasture and they work for you. Yeah, definitely. Right. Uh, the lot four is an Irish whiskey. Yeah, this lot four. She's out of our Irish whiskey times Monopoly Bowl, so mm-hmm. she's a half sister to the lot two here. Mm-hmm. Her mom is a complete commercial cow who I showed back in the day when I was little. Mm-hmm. She's the youngest heifer in our sale, and I see a ton of potential in her. She might be just like a tad greener than the rest of them by only a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I swear this is one of the soundest heifers in the sale. Mm-hmm. I think she could easily be the sleeper of the sale. Mm-hmm. She may get overlooked with all the color and the pizzazz of the other ones, but she is so elegant and flashy. And she makes her way around the pen, and she has such good neck extension and hair and her set and her legs and hips and mm-hmm. you, you name it, it came together for this one. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And we're, we're talking about a April 27th female, so we just got to give her a little bit of time. Don't hate her because she's young. Just give her some time and let her roll. Yep. yep. Yeah, she's kind of a hidden gem, I think. Uh-huh. Those are always fun, too. Yeah. Yeah, we had one of those this year that really just kind of came out of nowhere. So we like those. Those are good ones. Definitely. Mm -hmm. The lot five, we've got a Shorthorn Plus female. Yep. So she's out of our Augusta Pride donor. Uh Uh-huh. Times the hybrid bull, the Minhart cattle hybrid bull. Mm Mm-hmm. So she is related to Severa Styles and all that, too. This one's super fancy. When you talk neck extension and just being flashy, this is is the one you want. And not to mention she's got color. I mean, she's black and white. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's got a ton of hair and a ton of bone. And with her mom being in our pasture, she'll also go produce you calves. And she's going to be very maternal also. And I can't even describe how gentle this one is. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a good calf to put a kid on, she's it. I mean, Sydney can clip her just standing beside the corral. Oh, wow. And, yeah, my 8-year-old gives her a bath. They blow her out. (laughs) And she's one that... I would put a kid on her. She's got a massive hip and power in her bones, and it's going to be fun to watch that one grow. Mm -hmm. And we're actually keeping a full sister back for my 8-year-old to show. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about that hybrid cross. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was actually one of the first ones to turn on for me to clip. Uh Her and the 525, I remember clipping them two weeks ago. Mm Mm-hmm. And them being the first ones I clipped on, and they stood so nice. Mm-hmm. Isn't that so much fun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you get those ones in that are not very fun to work with. It's kind of like, oh, my gosh, come on. Yeah, I've had a couple of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just kind of comes with the territory. Yeah, I don't want any more, though. <laughs> They're yeah. a pain. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the lot six. We got a purebred shorthorn female here. And I don't know how she ended up at lot six. I would say she's probably one of the best shorthorns, mm-hmm. if not the best, we have produced on this ranch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the problem with bringing out your best is you kind of got to shuffle them. You mm-hmm. can't rate them best to worst. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so they all are kind of shuffled. It's uh-huh. not lot one is the best one. Right. Look at Sydney explaining yeah. it to mom, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Sydney, Gosh dang it, we talked about this. <laughs> Sydney, tell me why she's the best one, or one of the best ones. Yeah, she, she's actually got a full sister in the sale right now, but she's mm-hmm. an outsider times our Augusta Pride cow. Mm-hmm. She is the best shorthorn we've raised, the best purebred we've raised. Mm-hmm. Just super, super powerful and sound in the way she moves. She's Super, super clean fronted. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen a shorthorn as clean fronted as she is. Mm-hmm. When she gets out in stride, she just flows. She's mm-hmm. just beautiful and extended through her neck. Just a fantastic heifer. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds great. One of those you're really excited about, and probably one of those you kind of want to keep, don't you? Y- yeah, <laughs> she's been a tough one to, you know, you, but <laughs> yeah, we've been on the fence about, okay, do we show her or do we not? Uh-huh. And the, a story I got to tell you is that my little girl, my eight-year-old, mm-hmm. has wanted a black and white heifer 
forever. Mm -hmm. And everyone that shows with us knows that. Mm -hmm. And when she was maybe three years old, she latched on to a girl that was showing a black and white steer. Mm -hmm. And you could barely understand this little three-year-old. And she would tell our oldest daughter, Rachel, get the halter. We got to load my show heifer. (laughs) And she swore that that black and white steer was hers. Uh And that was her heifer. Uh And so everywhere we would go for a show, if we couldn't find Nevea, she was with Sarah Hadowick and her Uh steer. And oh, God. So now we have a black and white one. Uh And that's that hybrid. And so Uh we're like, okay, Nevea, are you going to show this red one? Or are you going to show the black and white one? Well, everyone knows she picked that black and white one. So, <laughs> so this, this one up. has to go in the sale. <laughs> right, right. And this one has had a lot of fans. She's red hot, perfect in the color, and she has so much power and bone. Mm-hmm. She is going to be a fun one. Mm-hmm. And she's also got a full sister as a lot seven. Yes. Yeah, yes. the lot seven. She, she's the sleeper out of the two sisters, I think. Mm-hmm. She's just not quite there yet. She's actually a day older than Lot 6, but Mm -hmm. they're basically born on the same day. She's just a little bit more slower in her maturity patterns, I think. Mm -hmm. She hasn't been putting on the weight as much, Mm -hmm. but I see just as much potential with this one as I do Lot 6. She's also the calmer one between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just just more mellow and more chill, Mm -hmm. more like her mom. Mm Mm-hmm. She also has the muscle and power and bone, and they both have super, super clean fronts, both doing super well on feed right now. and They're both growing their bellies, and they're super, super wide-hipped. Right. Yeah, and that's one thing we really look for is that good hip, Mm -hmm. good leg structure, that they can get out, move, meet their tracks, and that's where we call pretty darn hard. If they're not structural sound, you're not going to see them in the sale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially because we breed for cows that go in the pasture. Right. We also got to keep in mind, like, their pelvises and stuff and the maternal calving ease. Because if you start getting into ones with super, super narrow hips, they're not going to be able to go out and produce calves. They're not going to be able to go have those embryo calves. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be able to produce those show calves or the embryo calves you want. Sydney, I've talked to people that are 25, 30 years old that don't have the knowledge that a 16-year-old does. So uh, I'm very, very impressed. Very <laughs> impressed with that. I had, I'm enjoying this so much. So, And here's another one I want a story on. We've got one that most everybody has tag numbers, but this one doesn't have a tag number. She has pancakes. Oh, our little pancakes. <laughs> You know how many times my son tried to get her out of that sail pen? I have two, though. (laughs) She was going to be my show heifer. Uh I I love the crap out of this heifer. Mm -hmm. Sydney A. Eider picked her breeding. Mm -hmm. She's out of a really good Red Angus cow that Mm -hmm. always produces. I mean, she picks up that first time around. She's easy feeding, easy keeping. And I swear this one... Is pancake seven hundred pounds, Sydney? Probably. She's huge. Mm-hmm. And in she's got the belly of a bread cow already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And she's cycling in heat. I believe this has been her third cycle. She's just gonna be a fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she was she was born on the same day as lot five mm-hmm. and lot three so far. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, they were all born on March third. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. This one, this one's always been really calm since she hit the ground. Like uh-huh. she was born she, on a halter. Yeah, she she was also born with like white hair tips. Uh-huh. She was frosted. She went to the hair salon. She had her hair done, <laughs> and then she came out into the world. <laughs> it was like this big ceremony. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I I love this heifer very much. Uh, the first day we put her on the halter, I was scratching her and leading her around. Oh wow. She was just kind of made for it. And she's, she's a rock star daughter. She's a right. butterscotch color. Mm-hmm. and Yeah, she's got a lot of Charlay and Red Angus and a little bit of Semitol and Maine in her. So mm-hmm. she's kind of she's kind of crossed all over the place, but mm-hmm. she makes it work really well. Yeah, she's got a ton of rib. Her shoulder's really, really angular and pretty. Yeah, she's got her mom's super big old cow hip, super, super wide throughout there. Right. Yeah, like I said earlier, she's also got big old cow belly already. Like, mm-hmm. she, she's filling out and she's looking good. 
Yeah, I would reckon this one's the tamest one in the sale. Oh, great. And she's got a really cool name to go with it. Oh, yeah. Like she's it. got a story <laughs> behind it, man. Like we it. fought to get her in, fought to get her out, and we just said, hey, she's got to be sold. She's uh-huh. too good to just sit there. Mm-hmm. Sell the good ones. The lot nine, we got a shorthorn plus female. Yeah, this one is my little sister's favorite one in the sale. Mm-hmm. She, she's always asking if we can keep this one out mm-hmm. on top of the last one we just talked about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this one. So she's out of a hot commodity bowl times Augusta Pride, which is our donor cow. Right. So she, she's a granddaughter to our, that donor, Shorthorn. Mm-hmm. She's solid black with like a little racing stripe on her belly. Oh, cool. Yeah, she's also super calm. My little sister, who's eight years old, mm-hmm. does like the majority of the work with her. Mm-hmm. I love her belly. I like her ribs. She's got, mm-hmm. she is super, super muscular over her top line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's one that's, her top line's wide, and you can see that muscle line's going down, and she's going to be able to produce you some fantastic calves. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she, she's got the hair, too. I mean, even through the hair, once I got her clipped, when she walked, I could just see the muscle rippling down her top line. Mm-hmm. It's like this heifer does weightlifting or something. <laughs> I don't know what she's on. <laughs> she's cut. Yeah, she's she's, she's got, super good though. Yeah, well that's good. And she's uh, April seventh, so young one, bring her home, feed her, take her right on with her. Yep, and she feeds up real well. Yeah, you would never think she's an April born. Mm-hmm. She fits right in there with the marches. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. We go back to the steer division here in the lot ten, loaded for bear. Yeah, this loaded for bear times Irish whiskey and Monopoly Bowl. He's a half sibling to the 513 and the FL steer. He's the youngest steer we have in here. He's an, an April 22nd born. Mm-hmm. He might be a little smaller right now, but he's just as filled out. He's just as fleshy as the rest of them. He's got a, a ton of muscle expression. He's super wide talk, and he carries that throughout his hip, and he's just got a lot of stoutness through his feet and legs as well. He's going to be a fun one to grow. He's got... That hair, Mm -hmm. you talk about hair, he's got two inches hanging there. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to be a fun one for somebody to take him around and campaign him out. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, is he going to be ready for a July fair? Do we need to hold on to him a little longer? What's the thought on that? I think he'll make it in in a July fair. Okay. Okay. I think he'll do plenty well in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I would expect him to weigh out at about 1,400 pounds by mm-hmm. July. He's okay. pretty big, you know. He's, yeah, I, I, think his, I think his market weight will be about 1,300. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to be um, weighing him on Sunday, actually. Okay. On the Lord's Day, we'll weigh him. Okay. And then we'll be posting their weights. And we're also going to weigh the heifers, too, okay. in case of somebody, right. you know, like with that lot three, if they want to go market with her so they kind of know where they're standing at. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, that sounds great. A lot of 11. We've got another steer. We've got a Monopoly steer here. Yeah, he's a half-brother to the 8145 on the mm-hmm. Monopoly Irish whiskey side. He's out of a commercial cow in our herd, commercial semitol. He is the greenest steer in the sale, mm-hmm. I want to say. The, despite being green, I see heaps of potential with him. He has the best neck out of all the steers, I would say. Mm-hmm. Just super, super pretty and feminine but like when you get back past his shoulders he just explodes he's got a belly he's got a big hip he's got a wide top line he's going to be able to go out and just explode on feed Mm -hmm. and if he carries that front end like you say we like him yeah and he's super super mellow Mm -hmm. that's awesome and he's structural his feet his legs he gets out meets his tracks that's what makes him so good too you know he's got the angular the hip the bone but also he doesn't have any structures he doesn't click Mm -hmm. with the joints there Mm -hmm. when we talk structure and we talk hips and we talk bone this is it we breed for this and the videos will blow you away Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm Awesome. Yeah, just like how the 513, I consider her the sleeper of the heifers, mm-hmm. the 108 steer is the sleeper of the steers. Mm-hmm. The lot 11 steer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. He is my hidden gem in the steers. Oh, that's cool. You know, I, I call some basketball games for our high school right here, and we always kind of wonder how somebody gets the number zero. And this <laughs> lot, tw- lot 12, he's got tag zero. we got a steer here. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> we got a story on this one and his mom. Okay. <laughs> his mom is out of our broker cow, who we bred to halftime. Okay. And she's actually a split embryo twin. Ah. And she was the bottle calf one. Okay. So you she's... would never believe it. <laughs> yeah, you would never believe it. He is the oldest calf in the sale right now. Mm-hmm. He's um, a February 26 born. Mm-hmm. He is huge. Mm-hmm. He's well over 650 yeah, to 700 he's, pounds. He's, he's bigger than pancakes. Uh-huh. He is absolutely huge. Uh-huh. He has the belly. He, mm-hmm. he has a huge hip. I say huge hip a lot, but that's kind of what we breed for. Mm-hmm. So they, be- they better all kind of have it. Right. His hooves are huge. I like how he sets down just a ton of bone and a very good base to start with. Mm-hmm. He is super tame as well. Mm-hmm. He gets it from his mom, and we spent a lot of time around her when he was first born mm-hmm. because my little siblings loved going up and petting her all the time. Mm-hmm. And so this calf was always, like, right by people all of his life. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, when they go up and pet him, we're out in the pasture, and they walk up to the mom. What's the mom's name? Pandora. <laughs> and they scratch her tail. They scratch her udder to where she lifts her leg oh in the gosh. pasture. Yes. So, oh, yeah, so she she raised us a good one, and he is superior. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was also her first calf, too, so mm-hmm. she did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. That's great when you can do that with a first calf heifer. Yeah, definitely. Starting off right, and, and she's got a lot of future as well as the steer. Oh, yes. That's so good. I have enjoyed talking to these cattle. Uh, I, guys, I can't see the videos. I can't see pictures of them yet. So I am fired up about uh, seeing these <laughs> pictures after you guys get the rain taken care of. And I hope, I so hope that comes for you guys. Uh, you get the rain oh, out of yeah. the way and you get to take pictures. And, uh, man, I can't wait to see them. Can't wait to put this podcast video together. I am excited about seeing these. Uh, like I said, I can see the one on your Facebook page, The Lot 3. And, man, if if these others are, are what she is, why, they're, this is a very exciting set. And uh, I just uh, really appreciate you guys explaining those to us. And Sydney, 16 years old, talking about these animals and, and breeding these animals, doing the AI work. I just think that's great uh, from you. So, Sydney, do you have any other plans in your future other than coming back to the ranch? Not entirely. Still kind of figuring it out a little uh-huh. bit. Okay. All right. She also works at our uh, local <laughs> age shop store. I actually got home from work at 6. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Today. You you work at the what store? The Ace Hardware. Oh, okay. In Beulah. Okay. Well, good. Well, what do you do there? Everything. Okay. <laughs> I, I do the till, I do stocking, I do um, freight work. I, I help out just about everywhere. The only thing I don't do is deliveries. Uh huh. She figured she had about three extra minutes in her week, so she went out and got a part-time job. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. Ooh. Well, that's great. I'm just impressed with what you guys do, uh, what you guys put together, all the work, all the extra work that it takes to do those things and, and the struggles you guys have been through and, and just this year. And you guys have such a great attitude. And I just, I, I've had so much fun putting this podcast together and meeting you guys and talking with you. Uh, just really, really enjoyed it. Well, thank you for having us. And thank you for reaching out to us. We are sure humbled by it and just want to bring the best we can. Right. Anything else we need to know about these cattle, about the operation, anything else about this sale that's going to be on October 25th on SC Online? Well, there's several in North Dakota that are going to be happening in October. And as, you know, the ranchers and the breeders, we're going to work together to get the best shipping rate for you. Mm -hmm. If not, you know, we're going to, there's like five sales at the same time. So we're going to be, working really hard to get that reduced shipping rate and stand behind the cattle and help you through any which way we can, all the way from daily hair care if you're a beginner to feeding to anything we can. We stand behind these calves and stand behind the breeding in them, and we're there after the sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I've been helping people like clip and fit all summer. Mm Mm-hmm. On top of, like, showing myself, I've been stopping and doing one-on-one clipping and fitting with people, Mm -hmm. like, all over North Dakota. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and there's some pictures of you doing that here on the Johnson Cattle Ranch Facebook page. 
Yeah. And Cindy, you know, will work with anyone. She won the North Dakota State Fair showmanship Mm -hmm. two years in a row running. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she can show them. And that means a lot. You may have the best, but if you don't know how to show it, you may not get, you know, she can campaign a regular commercial heifer and put the elbow grease and work into it and show the pants off of it and Mm -hmm. I swear you can move up a couple spots just right. by that. Yes. Yeah, I, I fell in love with this ugly pasture calf. <laughs> and I, I am not even exaggerating. She was extremely ugly. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I fell in love with her, and I decided this is going to be my show heifer. Mm-hmm. And everybody was like, what are you doing? And I halter broke her, and I gave her like two or three baths a day, mm-hmm. and I managed her feeding, and she actually turned out really nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, that's great. You won uh, top five heifers with her mm-hmm. and several times. Yeah, and she was she was in supreme running several times too. Oh, wow! So it's like, you know, the work that you put in before the show mm-hmm. in the barn, that's where the win comes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you yeah, if you can get one with a good base on it, if you put the feed and the hair on it and the work into it, mm-hmm. and if you know how to show it and know how to teach that calf how to stand, you're going to accelerate way higher than what you would if you just picked out a random calf and took it around and showing it. Right. You you can make an average one amazing, and you can make a super good one horrible. Right. I absolutely agree. You know, we stand behind these cattle, and Mm -hmm. we'll help out any way we can. Facebook, we're all next-door neighbors. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, we are. And you guys have a great Facebook page. I want to encourage people to go to the Johnson Cattle Ranch Facebook page. I'm going to be hitting likes on a bunch of these that I'm seeing down here. You guys have some great stuff on there, and I'm sure if they're listening before the pictures and things come out, you're going to have the pictures and videos up on the Facebook page. I'm going to assume here... Uh, very oh, yeah. shortly after this, if if they're listening before it comes out. So go to the Facebook page and look at those. Look at all the, the other pictures that these guys have. And uh, the, the Facebook tells a little bit of a story in itself. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think that's great. Paul, Josie, Sydney, uh, I appreciate it so much. I uh, appreciate you guys coming on and, and talking about this operation. And want to wish you luck here on the sale on October 25th. And, and again, everybody go out to Zip Zap, North Dakota, and uh, <laughs> and uh, see these animals and or, or look at them on video. And, again, call these guys. And, uh, call Josie. Call Sydney. Call them on the landline because uh, the, the cell phones don't work very well. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's how we had to get hold of them. So, but guys, I appreciate it very much. And again, want to wish you a lot of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All righty, thank you, and we want to thank you for listening to another edition of Before the Bid podcast. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Before the Bid. For more information and to learn more about upcoming comp podcasts and sales, visit us at beforethebid.podbean.com or Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram pages. For information on being a guest on Before the Bid, please email us at beforethebid at gmail.com or one of our social media pages. Remember, that's beforethebid at gmail.com. Happy sales to you, and we will talk to you next time on Before the Bid.